Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code get100. That's code get100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. The following production is part of the We Be Geeks podcast collective. From days long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe comes a legend. The dream that came through a million years, that lived on through all the tears. It came here, the Fandom Nexus. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to our host as he plugged in his microphone. I have a podcast! Here he is, your spider pan, Jeremy. Hello! It is time again to journey to Neverland, but this time I'm flying solo. Uh, we've got a lot of things that I just wanted to be able to talk about real quick and get episode 399 out there to you with all of the new information that uh, has come out this week with the uh, D23 Expo over the weekend. Uh, there are even a few bits of game information that I've been seeing as I've went along, which uh, I should probably actually have a list now that I think about it. Uh, I'm going to pull up where I usually pull up a list of anything that's upcoming and coming out. Uh, lots of different things got announced at D23. In fact, a, a little bit of stuff about some parks information that I've gotten. Uh, very interesting to see, though, and that Adam the Woo was disappointed in some of the parks presentation. Uh, but there was presentation about Marvel games, uh, Marvel movies, all kinds of different things going on. Uh, I, of course, I wasn't paying attention to any of it. I was actually in Marceline, Missouri, Walt Disney's boyhood home with Lost Boy Philip, recording episode 400, which will be re uh, uh, released next week. And I'm planning on having not only the audio, but also uh, I'm working on some video that's going to be kind of like a slideshow. It's a lot of the, the photos that we took while we were there. Also a little bit of video from previous times that I've been out there. Uh, try to make it a neat presentation. It will be available on YouTube. Uh, I'll release it about the same time that I release the episode. So you can hear us going through Marceline and actually have uh, some photos to show you what it is that we're talking about. And at one point I thought about making that a Patreon exclusive, but I decided, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, because some of the photos I've already released to uh, the Neverland, uh, the Fandom Nexus Facebook page. So if you follow on the Facebook page, make sure you go and check out some of the photos. I haven't put every photo there, but I've put quite a few. Looks like, though, I even released one photo on there that it was kind of blurry. So... Uh, I'm not always the greatest photographer because I was in a bit of a hurry. I was trying to hurry up and get some photos uh, in between recording some audio uh, while Philip was taking a bit of a break in a room where they were showing the documentary, Walt Disney, The Man Behind the Myth, which is a fantastic documentary, but it's really hard to find a copy of it. But they show it at the museum up there in Marceline. 
Well, before I really dive into this is basically going to be a news show, but uh, one thing that I, I would, I'm going to point out, and this is probably something that's obvious to you, uh, but maybe not. Uh, maybe you had never really considered this. Uh, let's talk about modern Hollywood. Uh, what they, They've been doing at this now for a few years. The goals in Hollywood have been, of course, they want to uh, have more equality or diversity within the films and television series even that they're creating. Uh, they're, in fact, so concerned about you know having some sort of gender equality and uh, some sort of diversity or inclusivity that they're focused on that and not so much storytelling. And we've seen this time and again where they've put out lackluster uh, stories and, uh, just basically because, look what we did. We made the emphasis here. Um, and that's what I'm I'm seeing in here, and I'm, I, I I allow I view almost everything that gets put out through that lens of that's what they're trying to do. The main thing that they do not want to have is they want to cut down on any white male protagonists because white males are to blame for all of the world's problems. If you haven't heard, but that's what they think. That is the you know the OK Boomer uh, <laughs> Hollywood mentality these days. Now, if you happen to be a white male, listen to this. I'm sorry if you didn't realize that you were to blame for all of the problems in the world. But that's the way they treat us. That is that is where they're at. So the goal in film is to not have such a white male be a hero. And we've seen this with Thor slowly becoming a, bu a buffoon. Uh, even Bruce Banner's kind of a buffoon because we were passing the torch on to women. And if we're not passing it on to women, we're passing it on to people of a different color. Uh, if we can find something else, either of the, somebody who's just non-white or uh, any other type of diverse type of person, uh, if they can pass it on to that, then they are all the happier. That seems to be the Hollywood goal, and it is starting to finally bite them in the backside. Uh, well, they're getting a lot of bad reviews uh, on, on some television series that are currently airing that I'm not intending to watch. And also people are getting tired of it in the trailers, which, you know, YouTube has decided, oh, you can't see the dislike button anymore. But apparently some people have made plugins. You can see the dislikes. And we're going to talk about that here later. We want to still have fun. Uh, so, you know, we go with the what have you been watching, which... I don't know that anything's particular that I've been watching. Other than I, I did to watch, they, they live stream a lot of the G.I. Joe animated series on YouTube, and I do recall that I watched that. But I don't know if there's anything significant, really, that I have been watching lately. But uh, I do want to go through, uh, before we move into the news, uh, so yeah, I'll be, you'll be hearing that sounder again, which I didn't complain the whole thing. But um, what have I been playing? I actually just finished, and I didn't want to record this show until I finished through it, playing through The Last of Us on PS4. Now, originally, The Last of Us had come out on PS3, and then there's a remastered version for PS4, and here, uh, I believe it was last week, they just released it for PS5, and they're calling it The Last of Us Part 1, uh, and apparently they have added some things to it. I've seen some uh, photos where they've gotten an office building that you can wander through that is pretty much the Scranton office from Dunder Mifflin, if you know what that I'm talking about, from, you know, the the office, the television series. They've sort of recreated it and have it in disarray, of course, because The Last of Us is a post-apocalyptic world, so everything looks terrible. But uh, I was watching a little bit of footage while I was watching a live stream uh, for, uh, and I think I've mentioned this before, the PlayStation Access. Uh, they, uh, they're they like an official PlayStation YouTube channel, and I was watching them uh, play through on the live stream. I actually got a little bit, bit of a shout out because they were uh, trying to they go they were trying to they call it Platinum Monday. They're trying to get a platinum on a game, and they were actually working on getting the platinum. Uh, for those of you that don't know on plat on uh, PlayStation, that a platinum, of course, is when you've gotten every single trophy or achievement within the game on a PlayStation. So if you're an Xbox player, it's similar to I think you get the same thing, but it's just I think they're just trophies. Um, or you just have a gamer score for getting things. Uh, on PlayStation, you get trophies, which I think there's still point. You still get like points and everything, but it's not the same as the gamer score on like the all of you Xbox players out there. But uh, they were trying to get the platinum, and they were trying to have a water gun fight uh, within the game, and trying to, you have to win the water gun fight to get uh, one of the trophies. And I had said, well, you know what? It was funny if you get the platinum, maybe the two of you here in the stream need to go and have a water gun fight. And I got a, a shout out, and uh, was even mentioned that they liked my name, which is the Spider Pan on YouTube, which is my personal channel. If you want to find any more fun YouTube, uh, like I like I mentioned before, I'm going to be making this video with our trip to Marceline. That will be, of course, on the Fandom Nexus, which uh, there's two different ones. There's one that has a lot of subscribers. That is 
is the one that is, I've got an independent uh, email account. Uh, I've also made one that's kind of a side account to my normal account, which doesn't have a lot of people in there. I don't do a whole lot in there. I, that was that was me learning that I could create extra accounts on one email. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I could have, you know, monetized it or something, but I've already put all this effort into putting in everything, and I've built a following with the ne- the fandom nexus, uh, having that a separate channel, and then I've I've got a side channel to that email account that that is the Neverland official gaming channel, which of course is where you can find a lot of my playthroughs, and I'm going to put my playthrough of The Last of Us on there uh, once I've edited it together. Uh, and put together a nice package. But I, w- I decided I wanted to go through and play it again because I was watching them play it, and I was curious. Apparently, on this PS5, you have cheats that you can unlock, uh, like infinite ammo and some sort of invulnerability, all kinds of different cheats. And I was wondering, is this a new thing for PS5, or did I just not notice this was there for the PS3 and PS4? Well, it's, it seems to be exclusive to the PS5, so if uh, you were looking for a reason that you might want to buy it, that might be a reason. I mean, they have added some content and added some new features and some cheats. Uh, otherwise, I mean, I... You know, I, I own two copies of the game. I was thinking, well, if I, you know, if I had a PS5, which I don't right now, um, I was thinking, why would I buy this game again? But it seems that they have made some effort to try to mix it up a little bit. I mean, and it is a great game. It is worth playing. I, I will have to warn you because we don't normally endu- endorse like an R-rated type of thing. I mean, there's a lot of language and it's pretty violent. Uh, not quite as violent as what I saw of Part Two. Uh, I did not want to play that. When I learned a bit of the story about it, I was like, oh, I don't want to play that story. That doesn't sound good at all. And the first game is depressing enough. Uh, but they wanted to focus on the, the brutality and the violence a lot more as well. And I was like, yeah, I don't I don't need a, a brutal, violent game. Thank you. Not like that. That's that's not fun for me to have a depressing game that is just brutality that, that they want to make sure they're not glorifying the violence by going over the top with the violence. Somehow it does not glorify the violence. Yeah, I know. It sounds like flawed logic to me, too. Let me get a drink of water. That is the weird, crazy world that we live in. But yeah, I just finished uh, playing through it again. Uh, and it is a good, good story. It is depressing. And, you know, we do have an upcoming, I think, is it Showtime is going to have a series, a live action series? At one point they were talking about trying to do a movie of it. But, uh, you know, this is a series I would not be interested in watching because of the depressing tone that the game has. It's one thing to play through it as the game. It is, as you know, you enjoy it for the game mechanics. Uh, and that's fine, but, you know, just watching it as a series, you know, I wasn't into watching The Walking Dead either, you know, (laughs) so it doesn't sound anything that really would appeal to me. But uh, anyways, okay, so I wanted to at least talk about what I've been watching, which I couldn't think of anything other than some Jai Cho and uh, what I've been playing. So other than that, I'm still playing through uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, and uh, I'm getting deep into it, and I'm I'm really kind of enjoying myself. Oh, here's what I've been watching. I actually found on Tubi, Philip has been watching a lot of Tubi and getting me interested in looking at Tubi. Uh, it's T-U-B-I, if you happen to have a streaming device. Uh, I'm watching it on Roku. Tubi has a lot, you have to watch commercials with it, but they have a lot of old classic television shows on there, and a lot of great content, and I actually found uh, it looks like it had been a miniseries or something that was, perhaps was on YouTube or something, but it's been all been collected, but there's a Dragon Age uh, short, kind of a short film. I think it was about an hour, not maybe not even quite an hour long. It, but it was very short. Uh, but uh, I, I watched that this week, and it was kind of nice to, you know, I, I'm not that familiar with some of the lore of the Dragon Age games, because this is the first one I've ever played. Uh, so it was nice to kind of uh, get a little bit more explained to me, and uh, also some of the stuff that I do have learned get it to see brought into this series. So I kind of recommend checking that out as well. Uh, Felicia Day actually stars in that as an elf assassin. Very nice. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and dive into that news. Spanning the Disney and Geek Universe to bring you the best in comics, toys, movies, and entertainment. This is news from around Neverland. Well, first I got to point out that this is interesting. Uh, Mythbusters the game. It's considered a, sim- a, a uh, simulation. Uh, it came out on PC on September 1st. Uh, and also Pac and Pal, uh, which is some sort of a Pac-Man game, has also came out September 1st for both PlayStation and Switch. Uh, let me see where I can find that. So the, this Pac-Man title builds upon the gameplay of the series with a number of unique features, as well as the return of the key system from Super Pac-Man. 
That doesn't really tell me a whole lot about this. But Pac and Pal, if you happen to be uh, a fan of the Pac Man series of games, I would mainly play like the old arcade games. But I'm looking on here to see if there's any uh, mention of some of the new things that I've been seeing. Uh, there was some new footage I saw for the God of War Ragnarok, uh, and they showed a little bit more of the story, and it seems like the story's going to be focused a little bit more around Kratos' son. Uh, I haven't played the uh, remake, or reboot, rather, of uh, God of War. I've only played a little bit of... Well, I mean, I've played a little bit of it uh, as, as a stream, and I've played some of the original game, but I haven't really gotten into the series, and I know but it's very popular, as well as Assassin's Creed. I played the first game. I really didn't like it. I did complete it. But uh, I didn't enjoy it that much, so I, I really, you know, I didn't, I didn't keep in there. I, I found that the combat style was kind of difficult. I didn't like that. I was trying to stealth through the whole thing, and then at times they forced me into combat. But the game is not designed for you to be in combat; it's designed for you to be in stealth. Uh, if you understand that. So uh, apparently they've done something different though with these open world games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey and a few others. I think Origins even was not I don't know. But they've done some more of an open world, but I, which I guess plays differently. And they gain some different types of fans. But uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage is coming, and that apparently is going back towards the original st gameplay style from everything that we have seen with a, a bit of a tease that they've put out there. Uh, but that was the new ones, uh, the main things that um, I learned on some different games. Uh, other than I would like to also bring up that Tunic is supposed to be released September 27th on uh, PlayStation. It looks like we've got two different PlayStation symbols. It's also got a Switch symbol. Now, I thought this game was already out, but I guess not. Uh, this is basically, imagine The Legend of Zelda and Link is the Little Fox. That's kind of what this game looks like. And even when you look at the cover art, I mean, he's he's dressed like Link. Uh, and I've seen just a little bit of footage of this. The game looks adorable and fun, and I'm kind of excited that this is coming out soon. It's definitely one that I think I want to check out. I think it's been previously out on other systems. But now it's coming to PlayStation and Switch. So that'd be something you might be interested in. Okay, but now I do want to dive into some of the things that popped out here with, um, well, some of this, though, was uh, just other bits of news. But uh, So before we get into the 23, uh, Mattel has revealed 1987 movie Masters of the Universe figures. And there are some great photos at SuperheroHype.com showing a Skeletor and a He-Man figure. And these... Um, I'd say with the articulation, they're very similar to the Masters Universe Origins figures, but these, of course, are... They look to be more about the size of the Masterverse figures, and maybe they're coming out through that line. They're, they're a little bit bigger, and uh, but there we have a He-Man and a Skeletor that are based around the 1987 film. Uh, they're not the first 1987 Movie Masters figures. Blade, Sorod, Gwildor appeared in the 80s storyline, and Super 7 made Ultimates of He-Man, Skeletor, and Karg. But this is, of course, the first Mattel versions of these first two vehicle, uh, characters. And it is thought that maybe, if these sell well enough, perhaps they'll do a few other characters. All righty. The next thing that I had popped up, I don't know that we uh, spoke of this last time in the game. Yeah, September 9th is when this popped out. So uh, Black Adam 2, or Black Adam, a second trailer. My son sacrificed his life to save me. These powers are not a gift, but a curse. Born out of rage. Ah! So I'm not to know. This loose cannon needs to be locked down before innocent people start getting hurt. He's been asleep for 5,000 years. You find us a cell that can hold him, we'll take care of the rest. Who's on the team? I didn't bring a passport. We don't need passports. We're the Justice Society. There's a war going on outside. We ain't safe from Black Adam. We're here to negotiate your peaceful surrender. Heard about at least three killings this afternoon. I'm not peaceful. Nor do I surrender. Here we go. I kneel before no one. You 
didn't come here to seek justice. You came to exact revenge. I never said I was a hero. Giving you respect, I expect the same thing. You believe you are not worthy. But fate does not make mistakes. You have two paths. You can be the destroyer of this world. Or you can be its savior. October 21st, coming to theaters. The world needed a hero, and it got Black Adam. From New Line Cinema, Dwayne Johnson stars in the action-adventure Black Adam, the first-ever feature film to explore the story of the DC superhero, comes to big screen under the direction of of, uh, the director of Jungle Cruise, which I don't know if I can pronounce his name properly, and I don't want to mess it up. Um, Now, he's not really what I'd call a DC superhero. He's more of an anti-hero and actually more of a villain. Uh, and, and there's a bit more description here on the uh, on the official YouTube of this. It says, In ancient Kondok, Teth Adam was bestowed of the almighty powers of the gods. After using these powers for vengeance, he was imprisoned, becoming Black Adam. Nearly 5,000 years have passed, and Black Adam has gone from man to myth to legend. Now released, his unique form of justice, born out of rage, is challenged by modern-day heroes who form the Justice Society. Hawkman, Dr. Fate, Adam Smasher, and Cyclone. Uh, and this looks, every bit I get to see of this looks just very, very, very cool. I am excited for this movie coming out October 21st. And that was shot, probably should have been part of the trailer park, but I'm just kind of going in reverse order of all these different stories of what I uh, posted out here. Um, I don't remember that I have, uh, I don't think there's an outside link on this. I think I can just read what I have here. It says, just announced... Well, it was announced at the D23 Expo. During the Legend Ceremony, CEO Bob Chapek shared that Adventures Campus at Disney California Adventure is expanding with a third attraction with a brand new story that will bring guests into battle alongside their favorite superheroes. More to come on Sunday uh, during Josh DeArmo's Hall D23 presentation, which I have not heard uh, really much new that happened on Sunday other than something's being changed at somewhere else. Disney Games had Tron Identity. This is a visual novel adventure following Query, a detective program tasked with solving the mystery of an unprecedented crime. Inspired by the Tron franchise, this newly announced puzzle mystery game from Bithel Games arrives on PC and console 2023. And uh, I have not watched this video, but there's some video with this. Seems like it was just uh, some visuals with music, so it doesn't really help very much. They were basically going into some some details and being kind of a tease, <laughs> showing a uh, not memory disc. You know the disc on their back. Uh, wow, I forgot exactly what's going on. I forgot what to call it. Something else from D twenty three. Join the Fab Four on a brand new quest to explore the mysterious islands of Monoth and recover three mystical books to save the world from disaster. Disney Illusion Island debuts exclusively on the Nintendo Switch in twenty twenty three. Wish list on the Nintendo t- Nintendo eShop today. And here is some video for that. Minnie, Donald, Goofy, we bid you welcome to the world of Monoth! Hmm. Tell us what you need, Toku. Our entire world is in danger. You must travel to the three biomes of Monoth and retrieve the books of knowledge. Others are in need. We should help them. Don't you worry, Toku. We'll do it. Hang on. The books are gone. 
It's okay. We'll explain. TBD! 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 Wait, are those placeholder words or the actual words? Yes. TBD for 2023. <laughs> uh, to be decided. Uh, seems to be also what the, the, that's a good joke there. And also, they haven't uh, announced an actual release date other than it's going to be next year. Now, this appears to be a four player platformer with, of course, the Fab Four of Disney. The style here is of the newer Mickey Mouse cartoons. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that style. I prefer, like, some more vintage style. Uh, but still, this could be a lot of fun. Now, uh, Hocus Pocus 2. Coming as an original movie event, streaming September 30th on Disney+. Plus, and we got a new official trailer. Forever. They were right to fear thee. Magic has a way of uniting. Happy 16th birthday, child. I have a gift for my favorite customers. Legend has it, it's on the 16th birthday that a witch gets her powers. Candle. We have to get out of here. The witches will be here any second. Ah! The, the book is alive. He woke up. <gasps> oh. If we intend to live past sunrise, we have to steal their souls. Whoa, 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 wait. Can we talk about this? No. <laughs> we must fly. The eventual maniac obsessed with getting revenge on Salem sounds very bad for Salem. We should get some salt. Why? So we taste better when they eat us? Spread out. Six feet under. Stop! I am a good zombie. So uh, when my wife and I watched this this little trailer here, we realized it almost seems to have the same plot as the previous film. And it seems the only purpose in doing this is they realize, oh, there's a cult hit in there, so there's there's maybe money to be made, and oh look, we have the potential of doing this without any white men. <laughs> Which, that is the Hollywood trend right now. No white men allowed. And it almost seems like they're trying to make the Sanderson sisters pitiable. Like, they discover their powers at 16, and they're given the book by this weird witch woman that shows up as a bird. As they're cast out by, oh, white men of Salem cast them out. Uh, so, poor them, apparently. Um, seems to be what we're doing here. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to watch this. I love the original film, but I don't know that I needed a sequel, especially when... Uh, Disney has agendas all over in their content anymore. And I, I did manage to have some fun with Pinocchio. I seem to be one of the few. Uh, something else that I wonder, what in the world are they doing? They're calling this a Disney Plus original? I should have hit the button for the trailer park, really. We're just going through these movie trailers. But I still got all this news. But uh, this, uh, this is an original movie that's going to start streaming on November 24th. Nothing stays enchanted forever. This is Disenchanted. the change can be scary but it can also be exciting if i learned anything from meeting a princess on a billboard is that sometimes you just have to take a leap let's start our new life pretty soon this whole place will feel like home you'll see it's all part of the adventure that's not an adventure that's a landfill a land filled with adventure Congratulations. Oh, it's what they call a fixer-upper. Yes, once your peasants have dug out the moat and added a turret and a balcony from which you can sing. I see it now. Oh. Okay. 
Melvina, Monroe, I would have sold you this house, but I deal in slightly more upscale homes. In the Andalasia, the hardest part of life is finding your happily ever after. This world's very different. If this world is not to your liking, then you must change it. I wish. I wish. Jump in jelly stick. Wait, how am I talking? For a fairy tale life, and it's all gone terribly wrong. Or terribly right. At the last stroke of 12, nothing will be as it was before. Stepmother! Uh oh. Oh, Giselle, what have you done? <laughs> That's a wicked. Wicked good. <gasps> well, I, I will say at least they seem to have come up with uh, something creative to do. Uh, basically, Giselle, although I thought the, the point of the Enchanted movie was Giselle adjusting to, to our world and how things aren't the same way as a fairy tale world. But now she's having trouble letting go of her fairy tale life as they move out to the country into this little fixer-upper kind of home. And uh, do we really need to see Giselle become the wicked stepmother? Is that what we really wanted to see? But I'm, I am kind of intrigued where they're going with this. So I think I'm going to check it out just to see what they've done. I may need to watch the first movie. I don't I think I've only seen the original movie only once all the way through, and then I've picked, I've caught it on television and picked up and watched a few times. But I'm not sure if I actually own a copy of the movie either. Uh, but I am curious uh, what they're doing with this. But it seems very odd that uh, like Giselle has a wand and she's making wishes, but I think she's being duped uh, by another character. Uh, apparently, Idina Menzel is uh, appearing in this film as well. We also got a, a look at a, a streaming 2023 on Disney Plus. We got a look at the poster for Peter Pan and Wendy, which is you know because we needed some more live action uh, Disney remakes. Uh, but this one, I don't know if they're going to do something different. And because it's Peter Pan, part of me really wants to watch. But you know, do we really have faith in the remake train? But instead of making remakes, they've also decided to make. I don't know if this is a, a prequel to the animated. Or the live-action Lion King, but Mufasa, without James Earl Jones. But, but we have a Mufasa movie. And yeah, uh, uh, the initial reactions I was seeing, people say, you didn't ask for this. Uh, and then other people have been sharing it like, this is the most exciting thing they've ever seen in their lives, a Mufasa movie. Maybe they were the people who were children when the original movie came out. Uh, we're also getting a, a look uh, for 2024, the Snow White live-action with Rachel Ziegler and Gal Gadot. And, oh, uh, here's where things got interesting. Uh, and I don't think I can play it because there's some singing, but the, the main thing I'd want to point out with this, but The Little Mermaid with, uh, and I, the, the people who seem to be excited that, about this are people who are fans of Halle Bailey, who's playing Ariel in this. Uh, she does have some fans. I don't know what from. I don't know what all she's done. I have no idea. All I know is this looked very, very dark. But, I mean, I guess if you're trying to be realistic, at the bottom of the sea, it's you know wouldn't be very bright at all. But, I don't know, it seems darker than it should be. And I didn't like the way she sang. For the little clip that they have her where she sings part of your world, I didn't I like it. She's doing what I call vocal gymnastics. This, uh, from what I've been looking, where people have uh, gotten to get some sort of plug-in on Chrome or something to where you can get on YouTube and see how many dislikes something gets on YouTube, had 1.5 million dislikes. This is not looking to be a popular thing. Uh, and I, I, Little Mermaid is one of my favorite Disney movies. This is my favorite Disney princess. I have not had high hopes for this even when I heard it's announced because I'm tired of the remakes. So, But uh, they do have a few new type of things coming together. Fire and Water come together in this first look at Ember and Wade, played by Leia Lewis and Momadou Athi from Disney and Pixar's Elemental, coming to theaters June 16th. Uh, and so we got a picture here. We got basically this this female fire and male water, which I don't know what's going on with there, but there's, there was even a poster where they have like their hands kind of coming together in a film called Elemental. I don't know anything about this. I don't know if they showed any footage or anything at D23, but uh, it's... It, I Well, at this point, I will not, no longer say that Pixar can do no wrong because they have, but I, did, I do tend to enjoy Pixar movies, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested enough to check it out. 
Pixar is also going to have an original series of Win, Lose, or Will Forte as Coach Dan. This is coming from filmmakers Michael Yates, Kerry Hobson, and David Lally. Win or Lose comes to Disney Plus in 2023. So Win or Lose is the name of the series. And uh, it basically looks like you're, it's an animated thing with a Little League baseball team uh, where Will Forte is their coach. That's pretty much all we have about it. Also, you're invited on Disney Pixar's newest adventures, Elio, which I guess that's how I'm saying that, to meet Elio, a boy who finds himself transported across the galaxy and mistaken for the intergalactic ambassador for planet Earth. Starring America Ferreira as Olga Solis and Jonas Kabrib as Elio. Directed by Adrian Molina and produced by Mary Alice Drum, Disney Pixar's Elio lands in spring 2024. Don't know anything about this other than this picture. Uh, oh, joy, uh, is said. Uh, Amy Poehler is back to star in Inside Out 2, directed by Kelsey Mann, produced by Mark Nielsen, and written by Meg LeFauve. Disney Pixar's Inside Out 2 releases summer 2024. I didn't need a sequel to this movie, I don't think. Uh, I'll have to see what they're doing with it, because I think Inside Out wrapped up fairly well. I mean, if they've got a really good idea for a sequel, then okay. I'd still kind of like to see that sequel to Monsters, Inc., not not a prequel like we had with Monsters University, but I'd like to see Boo growing up and having some fish out of water with Mike and Sully coming into the human world uh, to think because they think she needs help with something maybe in her college years or something. I would like to see something like that. But Inside Out too, not really excited at this point, but who knows, when I see something, maybe then... But uh, I think they made their point very well and thought of, you know, taught a very valuable lesson, I think, to us uh, by making us think w- with a good story, which is that's the way you do it uh, by telling a good story. So that was coming. Journey into a futuristic version of Lagos, Nigeria with this first look at Walt Disney Animation Studios and Kugali's Awaju. Uh, it's a new original series streaming on Disney Plus in 2023. Awaju. Uh, I don't know what uh, Kugali is, but I guess Disney has partnered with you with Kugali to make this. No idea anything about Kugali. I'm sure we'll be here learning more about that in the coming days. Also, they've got a nice little picture here for Strange World coming to theaters November 23rd. Uh, also, Walt Disney Animation Studios revealed a first look at Wish, their all-new animated feature film that explores how the iconic wishing star came to be. Starring Ariana DeBose as Asha, directed by Chris Buck and Fawn Veer Sunthorn, produced by Peter Del Vecchio and Juan Pablo Reyes, and featuring all new songs by Julia Michaels. Disney's Wish releases November 2023. I had to comment when I shared this that, that it seems like they've run out of ideas. Like now we have to do a movie about the wishing star. Now, one thing I would like to point out that I, I think Disney is missing. Uh, they want to they be able to showcase some different cultures. Well, you know, all these different cultures around the world have folklore and stories that you can dive into. And I think Moana did a pretty good job of being able to utilize the culture, uh, the Polynesian area and and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't, I want to see how well they do it because it, it seems like, like in Kanto, uh, they said it uh, like South America type of thing. But did we really feel like we got some culture of South America to really help us appreciate it or did we just get what I think was a mediocre movie I didn't enjoy it much and I don't talk about Bruno because I don't care I had forgotten about that song until y'all apparently became obsessed with it uh, so I, I I don't know it seems like Wish they're tr- is somewhere where they're trying to uh, have like a setting that might be more hmm, they're looking at this uh, this female character antagonist here with her goat uh, she looks maybe Spanish I don't know I'm not sure where this is supposed to be set around uh, but I don't know if we're going to get anything that would reflect that culture in the story. We're just like, oh, here's how the wishing star comes to be, which did we need that? Is this a prequel to Pinocchio? I mean, what is this? All right. So, uh, 14 new Disney legends were honored. Congratulations to the 2022 honorees, Anthony Anderson, Kristen Bell, Chadwick Boseman, Robert Coltrane, Patrick Dempsey, Robert Price, Bob Foster. I guess that's all one name. Robert Price, Bob Foster, Jonathan Groff. Don Hahn, Josh Gad, George Hadoon, Idina Menzel, Chris Montan, Ellen Pompeo, and Tracy Ellis Ross. Now, not everybody in there is people that I would be like, oh, yeah, they're definitely people who should be Disney legends. Uh, they're, you know, they've at least played one character, maybe in two different movies, probably a third one when it comes to Kristen Bell and Josh Gad. I'm sure we get into third Frozen movie coming anytime. Uh, but they're just kind of throwing them out and now anymore. Uh, I, I think it was just a nice gesture to give one to Chadwick Boseman, uh, in honor of his, 
uh, playing the Black Panther in, in a few movies. Um, and too bad he doesn't get to come back for the sequel. I get a drink of water here. So I do appreciate that. And also giving one to Don Hahn. Why did it take him so long to give him one? So a lot of these people are just people who played some characters in, uh, you know, at least a couple movies and probably a third. Um, I, I kind of like to have, see those older names doing things in uh, there and getting recognized. All right, so some other bits of news here. Uh, so Gargoyles Remastered has been announced. The 1995 Sega Genesis side-scroller based on the beloved 90s animated series is getting the remaster treatment, bringing Goliath and his team back into the spotlight. Uh, it says, unfortunately here, this is from Game Informer, it says, unfortunately the reveal didn't come alongside a trailer, a list of platforms, or a release window. However, it sounds like we should expect a similar treatment that the Disney Classics game collection received. Those games were enhanced with high-res graphics, a rewindability, a level skip, and art gallery showcasing concept sketches and other historical goodies. And uh, they actually have on Game Informer, they have video up on YouTube for the Disney and Marvel Game Showcase. About 12.33, it says, where they uh, they announced this game. All righty. Uh, remembering Disney legend Ron Logan, while we're talking about uh, Disney legends, uh, Ron Logan, who was responsible for revolutionizing live entertainment for the Walt Disney Company, died Tuesday, August 30th in Orlando, Florida. He was 84 years old. Former executive vice president and executive producer for Walt Disney Entertainment was named a Disney legend and illustrious honor given to individuals in recognition of their extraordinary contributions to the Walt Disney Company in 2007. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that everybody that uh, they're honored this year was extraordinary, but uh, okay, you know, I won't fault them for that. Anyways, uh, former Disney CEO ended Twitter deal after finding substantial bot counts. Now, Elon Musk has already mentioned there seems to be a lot of bots out there that are fake accounts that uh, Twitter is utilizing. Uh, apparently, Bob Iger noticed the same thing. Uh, I guess Disney at some point wanted to purchase Twitter uh, because they were finding good use for the platform for promotion. And if there's anything that, that Disney knows how to do is how to market the dickens out of everything. Uh, and so they were looking to buy Twitter, which did not know that this had ever happened. But apparently Bob Iger did talk to the Washington Examiner and talked about this. Uh, the other concern he had was basically, quote, hate speech uh, going on over there, which basically means anybody who doesn't agree with uh, Disney's agenda, they, they'll accuse you of hate speech. WDW News Today uh, decided to let everybody know that Moana and Zootopia is replacing Dino Land USA at, at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Plans are still in early stages. No details on potential attractions have been announced. All they got is some concept art. Now, people have been begging the question with this. What's going to happen to the dinosaur ride? Is that going to get torn down and, or changed into a ride reflecting one of these two properties? Zootopia, I can kind of understand in Animal Kingdom. Although, I mean, it is uh, as anamorphic the word I'm looking for for these animals. I mean, these are human behaving animals. They're not like animals. I mean, the, the idea behind Animal Kingdom was we learned about animals. Even, you know, we were going to have mythological animals with a beastly kingdom that never happened. And... I, Epcot, as it was supposed to be sort of fun and learning about the world, got a Frozen attraction. And uh, now we see Epcot's being, or the Animal Kingdom has already been changed with, we've got an Avatar world, which doesn't have any animals in it, that are from our world, at least. Uh, I don't know if that's a replacement for Basely Kingdom. So Zootopia is kind of a weird thing to put in there. But Moana, I do not understand Moana going into Animal Kingdom at all. That doesn't make any sense. If you want to build a Moana area, uh, build it into the Magic Kingdom somewhere. Wouldn't that make more sense? And that where we do that kind of thing? And I kind of wonder what it is they're doing. I mean, the concept art looks kind of neat, but uh, I am not sure what's up with this. And I wonder if this is what Adam and the Woo was talking about. Apparently, I didn't watch his video, but I did see he had a video out there that he was not impressed uh, with the announcements or whatever. Okay, now I've got a series of trailers coming up. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit this button. Another gator got in the house. Another gator? Give me that sugar. Come here. Oh. Oh. Get him, Mom. Oh. Get that gator. Ah. Ah. The Neverland Trailer Park. We got an official trailer for Willow this November. The Magic Returned. Uh, this is coming straight to Disney Plus as a series. You think you know what is real and what isn't. What is light? What is dark? Now, forget all you know. Come with me. Willow. We're looking for the sorcerer, Willow. 
I was told that once long ago you defeated the forces of evil. You remind me of your mother. My dear friend, I thought I could prevent all this. I was wrong. My brother was abducted. The world needs you again. It needs your magic. Follow me. We must go beyond the edge of our world into the unknown. I need your help. Just like old times. Ah, running. Horses. Mayhem. Mayhem. Happy to see Eddie. Our true enemy is still out there. Rallying the forces of evil. And the only thing standing in its path is us. I'm going to enjoy this. If you think you're what I'm thinking, so am I. I doubt that very much. Take him to my tent and make sure he's tied up. I don't know. See, that kind of sounds like we're on the same page. When I was a kid, I used to play at being a sorcerer. Visiting strange worlds, fighting monsters. Run! Never thought I'd actually really do it. What the hell is that? Trolls. I'm so miffed. We have to hurry. How will you defeat us? Same as last time. With my friends. November 30th. I have so much high hopes for what a Willow series could be like that I hope it lives up to some of them. I because I, I do adore the original film. I don't know if they've quite quite captured the magic with this trailer, but maybe the series has captured the magic of the original film. Uh, I am I'm hopeful this is going to be good. Uh, I'm just I'm just anticipating on checking it out. All right. Uh, here we also have for the next season, well, you know, they call it season three of The Mandalorian, but really isn't it like season four because it wasn't the Boba Fett, uh, Book of Boba Fett kind of a Mandalorian season, but I still enjoyed it. Here we go, a look at the next season. This is the one that you saved? You are as its father. A clan of two. But you have removed your helmet. Then you are a Mandalorian no more. Your cult fractured our people. Where were you then? Did you think your dad was the only Mandalorian? Season 3, streaming 2023. Don't know when in 2023, but it's coming. And this is interesting because uh, one thing I had noticed, and I, I feel like I need to rewatch some of the Clone Wars, but the group that uh, Mando had belonged to seemed to remind me of Death Watch, which in the Clone Wars, Death Watch was kind of a problem uh, for the Jedi and for the planet of Mandalore. And it looks like... Uh, uh, our boy is going to be going back to Mandalore and trying to help save his planet. And uh, he's been kicked out for having removed his helmet from basically what was Death Watch. If I'm remembering the name of it properly, somebody will remind me if I'm not. But um, you know, we're going to I'm, I'm interested to see what that is, because there seems to be a difference between Death Watch, who they're very, I guess, classic, traditional Mandalorian warriors uh, versus like Boba Fett, who uh, we've seen him without his helmet a lot now, haven't we? Another series coming to 2023 Disney Plus, 
Marvel's Secret Invasion. And if you're expecting the, them to recreate some of the story from the actual comics, uh, guess again. You've been avoiding Earth. But I have called for your help plenty of other times, and you've been pretty content to let those calls go straight to voicemail. Yeah, well, this is different. How much do you know about your security detail? What do you mean, how much do I know about it? Fury, we gotta be very careful now. You're in no shape for this fight that lies before us. This is just the beginning. This is my war. Alone. And I'm the last person standing between them and what they really want. And what is that? Marvel Studios Secret Invasion. Coming next year, Samuel L. Jackson is back as Nick Fury. Uh, I don't recall in the comics that he was fighting this war alone, because in the Secret Invasion in the comics, there was a lot of Marvel heroes that had been replaced by scrolls and had been going on for years, and no one knew. No one was all the wiser. Now, I didn't read the entire series of that. I got tired of massive Marvel events, and uh, you know, trying to collect the whole thing was really... It gets expensive. Uh, I think the last major series I tried to collect all of was the Civil War, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> but I'm kind of curious what they've done with this. It seems like maybe they decided, oh, yeah, that's right. The scrolls are supposed to be evil aliens. Uh, and uh, so the scrolls were back. So I'm kind of seeing how uh, I'm curious how they're going to bring that back around. So we'll check that out next year. Here's something else that uh, we didn't think we needed, and but we got it anyway. Uh, Santa Claus has an announcement to make. Tim Allen returns us in the Santa Clauses streaming November 16th on Disney+. Plus. Uh, yes, it is a uh, a series, if I'm uh, understanding this correctly. Attention, everyone. Santa has an announcement to make. For the good of Christmas. For the good of my family. I, Santa Claus, have decided to retire. We have a grief counselor, right? You're interviewing to become Santa Claus. Yes. Can't wait to rub this in Brady's face. All I do is... Give us your best ho, ho, ho. Oh, okay. Here we go. Ho, 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 ma, ho, ma, ho. You see that? I called a little audible there. Anyhow, thanks so much. I sing, by the way. <laughs> no, Brady can sing. Play, play, play. Me. Now, I, it was kind of fun getting Peyton Manning in there and making jokes on Tom Brady because Peyton Manning wants to be the new Santa Claus there. Uh, but what's weird is Bernard the Elf is back, and uh, that actor has grown up, and he's not doesn't look like an elf anymore, <laughs> okay? Because the elves are all played by children. And, you know, I, as much fun as it might be to bring Bernard back, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I, you know, I, I don't know. Is, is the other kid who is... Uh, I guess Santa Claus 2, um, I believe it's the same little actor that was in uh, The Kid with Bruce Willis. He was supposed to be like a young Bruce Willis. Uh, but uh, he had glasses and invented things. I wonder if he's some other back. So uh, this is something that uh, I don't know that we needed, but here it comes. But it might be fun. So I I'm definitely going to check it out. Something else that I'm also curious about. Uh, it says two stories of fate, one destiny. Tales of the Jedi coming to Disney Plus. Six original shorts. Streaming on October 26th. 
every whoops where there is life but you must face death honor it do not fear it jedi asoka is jedi The best way I can protect you is to teach you how to protect yourself. Master Dooku. I want to bring peace and order to the galaxy. Master, stop! It is the only way you will truly have victory. My Obada one. Again. Again. Stand down. I'm tired of fighting. I've been warning them about the coming darkness. Let's hope all that training pays off. So we're going to get some backstory for Count Dooku and even a little bit of extra side stuff uh, with Ahsoka, her story. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. This is this looks very cool. Plus, it's by the same creators of The Clone Wars, uh, The Bad Batch and all that. You know, they and they've got a good track record of making really interesting Star Wars stories. Uh, so I'm kind of curious if they did talk to George of what his some of his intentions on Count Dooku's backstory was like. Uh, and it even looked like we got to see Yoda with uh, brown hair. <laughs> so... Now, another, I, I need to do some research on Werewolf by Night, but we got a look at a brand new trailer for a special presentation, Werewolf by Night, which is streaming October 7th. This, um, I don't know if there's really a lot of audio that's going to be telling you much, but, but let's hear it anyway. escape the shock the terror of werewolf by night tonight it is every hunter for themselves good luck i'll be rotting for you but one of you is a monster masquerading as one of our own i can't wait to find out what breed of evil you are You wanna see this, darling? Please don't do this. Death is coming for you! Werewolf by Night. Now, see, this looks to be, like, legit horror type of stuff. Uh, coming from Marvel Studios, going to be on Disney+. Plus. Seems a bit uh, different, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of half curious, but uh, they did, they showed this trailer in black and white, and I don't know if it was because uh, the presentation is in black and white or just because they were doing, like, an old-school trailer style uh, that uh, you can kind of maybe hear in some of the audio. Uh, or, you know, they might be using black and white to disguise some of the gore that they hinted at. So I am not sure what's going on with this, but I'm a bit curious. Uh, I did have a trailer. I don't know that I could really play this because uh, there's a, a near curse. Uh, and I don't want to have any language in here. But uh, Quantum Leap picks up 30 years after Dr. Sam Beckett stepped into the accelerator and vanished as physicist Ben Song makes an unauthorized leap into the past, leaving his theme behind to solve the mystery of why he did it. 
So uh, this raises a couple of questions, and we have uh, some comments. Even Scott Morris from Disney Indiana uh, says, I'm curious what the rules they will follow on this on the new show. In the original, Sam could only leap to events in his lifetime until the last season. He started to leap farther back in time. And uh, I, I commented, maybe Ben can find Sam and bring him home. And uh, somebody uh, re- also replied, Sherry uh, Galinati, I hope I said your name right, uh, sincerely hope Ben passes by Sam and, and just lets us know he's happy and safe wherever Sam has ended up. Uh, but this is, as, I'm, as I've mentioned at the beginning of the show, that Hollywood's uh, kind of focal point is make sure we, uh, we go with, uh, let's remove white men from the equation, but although it looks like we're trying to save some white men, uh, but uh, that seems to be the goal of, re- of bringing Quantum Leap back. And one way that they, uh, they have attempted to bring more, you know, uh, diverse or, or gender equality or representation is instead of creating new things, they dig up old franchises or alter current franchises uh, in order to bring them about. Now, we've seen this with Ghostbusters. We're seeing it with Rings of Power. Uh, a lot of different things. They, they get a, something, an established franchise, and they, they try to change the direction on it. Now, this is what has got me with some questions. I was hoping I was going to get a teaser for the fifth Indiana Jones film because apparently they showed something. And there was even photos leaked around with Harrison Ford meeting up with, uh, and I, I, I have a hard time with his name, but Short Round, the actor who played Short Round, who apparently is going to be appearing in some Marvel production as well. Um, uh, I think it has something to do with because they, they, they announced a cast for the Thunderbolts, and I believe he came out for that one, if I remember correctly. Uh, but they, they are looking at the Thunderbolts uh, having U.S. Agent and uh, the Winter Soldier and uh, I think Baron Zemo and a few other characters popping out for Thunderbolts. But I believe it's like Kihai Kwan. I hope I said his name right. But, you know, the actor who played Short Round. But there's a photo of him with Harrison Ford. They're being reunited. Although uh, there's nothing that I've seen that confirms that he might be popping up in the fifth Indiana Jones. But one thing I have seen as being a confirmation is an actress named Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who is Indiana Jones's goddaughter, appearing in this film. Which makes me wonder, because, you know, when we saw that fourth film, uh, if they'd have done better, I wonder. I wondered if Shia LaBeouf was supposed to be carrying the torch of the, this franchise, uh, passing the baton or whatever, but it didn't go over well, and people don't really like Shia LaBeouf that much, uh, I don't think. So I wonder if this is going to be an attempt to pass the torch on to a woman, because, you know, representation, we need more women heroes or something like that. I, you know, I'm curious if that's going to be the goal, but uh, we do have a bit of a, a look here. We got Toby, Toby Jones, Antonio Banderas, Mads Mikkelsen, John Riss Davies is coming back as Sala. Uh, a lot of different uh, characters uh, or actors coming back, but it's kind of neat to get a, a look at some of these. But we still have not gotten a look at this movie. But I, I am come kind of wondering, you know, it, it, when you focus too much on an agenda, you don't worry about a story, and that was maybe part of the problem. Well, the, the, the problem with the story was just weird, I guess, with Indiana Jones Four. Uh, there was a lot of things that went wrong with that one. So. Uh, if they if they really blow it, because I mean they don't even have Spielberg involved or Lucas involved, so I don't know. But we did get a new trailer for Star Wars Andor. Spies, saboteurs, assassins, who've all done terrible things on behalf of the rebellion. Cassian Andor. No matter what you tell me or tell yourself, you'll ultimately die fighting these bastards. Wouldn't you rather give it all at once to something real? We've chosen a side. We're fighting against the dark. There is an organized rebel effort. Drill down and get a hunt started. You realize what you've set in motion? People will suffer. Time has come to force their hand. At what cost? Everything! Every day we wait, they get stronger. Let's take them by surprise. For the greater good. Call it what you will. Let's call it war. People. Are standing up. They're afraid. Right now, they're afraid. Let's go! Let's 
Star Wars Andor. Three episode premiere, streaming September 21st. Can I say I'm excited about this? Because I'm excited about this. This looks really, really cool and really, really fun. And, you know, Forrest Whitaker's back. Uh, I mean, this is this is a prequel to Rogue One, uh, this series. Uh, I'm very curious to see where, you know, where you even get to see Mon Mothma as she slowly uh, is putting together the Rebellion. Uh, so uh, just a lot of exciting things going on with that. Uh, so, but yes, Andor is coming up very soon. I am, I'm excited to check that out. A couple other little bits, things that I just want to mention. Happily Ever After it appears to be returning to the Magic Kingdom in 2023. Uh, it appears to be the fireworks show. Uh, I'm sure it'll be uh, revitalized a little bit, but they're going to have a new Happily Ever After show. Uh, and I figure with this little bit, the blurb that says the Magic Kingdom is talking about Walt Disney World. Also, I saw a thing Floyd Norman posted up a Disney original documentary called Mickey, the Story of a Mouse. November 18th, 2022. And uh, this it says it has an air date, which uh, to me, I'm figuring it's Disney+. Plus. Uh, so I'm kind of curious. So what else going on with that? It's a, this really neat little artwork that uh, has the traditional Mickey with the yellow background. And then down in the middle, it's kind of like it's split. And we're seeing Walt Disney with Mickey and all the different ways we've seen Mickey throughout the years. Uh, so very interested to see what that is. All right, but I'm going to wrap up the show with that thought right there. And so, of course, as usual, I want to thank Ricky Pope, Karen Kennedy, uh, Ricky Pope of Christian Nerds Unite, by the way, and Darren Wilhite of the Wilhite and Wall Show for helping me out with the opening. I remind you our email address, podcast at neverlandpodcast.com. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and, of course, you can join the Neverlanders on our website, neverlandpodcast.com. And don't forget to come to our Patreon and sign up as a, just as little as a dollar. You can help out the show, and you'll get some exclusive content. You'll also get some uh, the feed, an RSS feed, without any of the ads, except for any ads that I happen to read, like the one I'm about to tell you right now that also my podcast reviews. Find it on neverlandpodcast.com. If you happen to have a podcast, you want to get all your reviews from around the world, you pay a yearly fee of about 50 bucks and you get everything sent to your email it is a wonderful service but i could use some some new reviews we haven't gotten a new review in a long time so if you haven't reviewed the show please do that and also i want to preview remember next week episode 400 philip and i in marceline missouri and also i've got an exciting series of interviews coming up with uh, some of the creators behind adventures in odyssey a long running over 30 years radio drama comedy series uh, that maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't. Uh, we've actually talked to some people who have, uh, the, some of the actors in this radio drama have also been voices in some Disney animated features. Uh, and they've been on the show previously. So if you're a longtime listener, you've been able to check out like Katie Lee and Will Ryan and Townsend Coleman and things like that. Uh, they've got a long history of some great characters. Uh, but I've got a couple of the writers coming up, Marshall Younger and Phil Lawler. Marshall Younger, I've already interviewed. Phil Lawler, I'm supposed to interview tomorrow. Uh, but it will be coming up in the in the 401, 402, and maybe even a few more writers. Because I, I wanted to discuss how you can write a story that gets someone to think about something. Maybe it maybe teaches a lesson, but it doesn't feel like it's got an agenda l- laced in it and preaching at you. There are ways to get a message across in a good story that somewhere somebody can you know, just take it back and think on it for themselves instead of having beat it over their head. And we're going to talk about how to do that in those coming weeks. But a lot of exciting things coming up in the next few episodes. Thanks for listening to this one. And come back next week. Make sure you tell your friends about all the fun. I mean, I going into Marceline, I got to say, it was like a homecoming. And even re-listening to the audio as I've been kind of putting things together, uh, I, I feel like I need to go back again. Uh, it is. It was great to reconnect with the magic of Walt Disney and some classic Disney uh, in Marceline. Uh, but yeah, we'll definitely come back next week. But until then, get lost. In an adventure! Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. 
Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code get100. That's code get100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.